Welcome to the Polytopian Interviewer, where I interview people on their experiences and views on the Polytopia Discord community. I have Loki with me this time. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm surprised. A little bit of a self-esteem boost to be asked to be interviewed about my Polytopia experience. Um, <laughs> this should be interesting. Mm -hmm. By my teammate, TNT, one of our newer junior players who's done great so far. Really happy to have mm. you as part of the Vikings, the now Vikings, which were formerly the Cosmonauts. Yeah, I'm still making quite a yeah. few mistakes. I'm still working on that. Hey, well, I've been playing Polytopia seriously for about a year, and you can see all the mistakes I make. All the pretty <laughs> true, true. terrible plays I make. So don't worry too much. You joined the Polytopia Discord on October 15th, 2019. Care to okay. share about what the community was like back then? Well, so is that the main server? Yeah. I got on just so I could start playing games with real people. I've been playing the bot for a couple of months and getting more and more into it. Became the kind of the game I was playing the most. I started playing Polytopia because I really enjoy strategy board games and stuff. Mm. Uh, my wife and I love games like Catan and and things like that. And so I was sort of looking for a game that was like that. Also um, enjoyed chess, although I'm not very much of a, a really good chess player. Yeah, um, same. I'm, I love it. I love the strategy and everything, but I've never, I'm not a much uh, of a chess master. But that sort of thing. So I was like, what is a game like that that you can get an app for? And, I, and Polytopia came up and I just really got into it and found out that I saw the thing that there was a you know, competitive play on online. And so I got onto Polytopia main. And, and so I guess as far as the community goes, I never really got into community talk and the uh, tribe talks and stuff like that, just that's okay. not what I was really in there for. It seemed like it's sort of a free-for-all. There's all, all kinds of different people doing different things, and a lot of it was maybe just I'm in my late 30s and have kids and everything, and I've got lots of things going on in life. And so that was not what I was seeking was a social, which will be funny when we talk about how very mm -hmm. involved I am in the team now. You know, <laughs> it's sort of ironic. But, but as far as the main server, I've really just used it as a place to, to play. Of course, early on, there's a lot of good strategy talk and stuff like that, too. So I did learn a lot, find a lot of really great resources, of course, when I was poking around the different strategy talk and things like that. I mean, connected with some people early on, which was which got me into Poly Champions, which I'm guessing we'll move on to talking about in a little bit here. Yeah. So how did you first get into Poly Champions? So Icky Karma, who, of course, you know, because he's our main team leader mm -hmm. the, of the Cosmonauts, now the Vikings. We played a game together. I really don't even remember. It was a one-on-one, -on -one, I'm sure, because that's what I was playing. And you know, we kept playing some games together. He, you know, I wanted to play some team games together, um, as like two v twos with him. And he was coaching me a lot. <laughs> he ragged me because in the first several games we played, he was able to get hits on my giant boats. I did not upgrade my giants as soon as I put them <gasps> in the water. And so he was. Sin. And so after the first time I did that, I know I was terrible. I just I, it was this bad habit. And so he wailed on one of my giant boats for our first game, and he said, you shouldn't do that. And so, like, the next couple of games, he was watching out for me to do that because I just kept doing it. Mm -hmm. He was like, I told you! He would get, like, <laughs> fog hit on battleships on my giant boats. And it was like, he was like, you're doing really good, but this is terrible. And so and so he was giving me strategy and advice when he mentioned Poly Champions. But he said, you should get into it. You should come and see because you're definitely a pretty good player. And you'd learn a lot. It's a lot more fun, a lot more competitive. And you talk about the teams and stuff. And the thing is, so I've been a sports guy my whole life. Uh, I grew up playing sports. I was always played sports all year round in high school. I'm American, so that's the secondary school we have. High school, we call it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, was, I played football, American football. I played soccer. I was a wrestler. I did track and field and cross country, different points. And, but uh, pretty much every year of high school, I had a sport I was playing all through the year. And so I loved team camaraderie. I loved working together. I always liked being, you know, sort of competitive, but especially the team aspect of it. Not so much that was the bonus for me. And so I coached soccer and t-ball and stuff. I actually got really into soccer coaching in recent years. And, and like I said, I just love team sports. And so when Icky was telling me, like, there's this, you know, team polytopia thing, I was like, that sounds really cool. And it really sort of scratched that itch of wanting to find that community of people playing together for a common purpose in a competitive environment. And really, as I discovered, highly competitive. These people have taken this game apart and gone into it in such depth. It was like going into a chess manual, mm -hmm. going to yeah. a chess club. I love that. So all those things were really, th 
things that I enjoy the and la- the deep analysis, but still friendly play when you want to do that. And but really like and some real fun rivalries and competitiveness that sometimes gets out of hand and you can discuss how out of hand it got in a second here. I know that's one of the questions you wanted to talk about. I'm glad to have that conversation about the cheating scandal that the cosmonauts had. And but I just really enjoyed Polychamps when I got into it. And then when I got in there, a couple different teams contacted me. And at that point, Icky had actually gone from the Jets, where he was sort of stuck as a crop duster, even though he's really good, because they were just such a strong team, and he never really could get into the full-time Jets lineups, hmm. senior level. And so he was loaned to the Cosmonauts, because the team had shrunk a bit. It was very, very talented. Obviously, we had some great players, and they were a playoff team, or playoff caliber almost, but they just needed some more, and they needed some more leadership. I mean, the leader of that time, of course, was Prophet, who's well known and was highest ranked across the board. Sort of this legendary super aggro player who was a teenager, still in high school at the time when I joined Cosmonauts. And so it was funny him leading this team, and I think that was an aspect of what was going on. But he reached out and recruited me heavily. A couple other teams contacted me, but Prophet was the first, and Icky had told me about him, you know, him about me, and so I, that's how I got into to the Cosmonauts. Also, I thought Cosmonauts was a cool and unique name. And mm-hmm. it was just different. I, I was really drawn. I thought that was neat. And when I got to, onto the team and started playing, also Joe Young and I, who of, of course is just the best. I mean, it's ridiculous. Like I started kind of a little bit before him. So it's funny because at the very beginning, I was kind of telling him some stuff. And so there's this brief moment where I was like coaching Joe Young before he completely just became the player. Like That's just cool. shooting up the loop leaderboard and dominate everybody. So I was like, there's a couple of games we played together friendly. I was like, oh yeah, you should do this. These are some things I've heard and learned, you know, just in playing with Icky Karma and Profit and others. And we played this one epic game where we were playing 2v2, ranked but random. And it was like, I was Imperious and he was Lux. And we came up against Kiku early and I thought I could rush him and I couldn't. And and then his teammate was on a separate continent up above. Like I knew it was coming. And I kept saying was, you know, he was going to come at me. But I, was, I felt really good because I geared up for that. And so the rush didn't work. I was trying to play that profit strategy. I'd been learning a little bit about it. rushing with riders. Didn't work. But I was able to hold them off just enough. Which And that's kind of a style thing I've found is my style a bit. Is I jokingly say that I'm a diehard Loki. I'm Loki McClane. That's from the diehard movies. I can handle, for some reason, I'm able to just fend off imminent death when I'm in a bad position. Or I just know that that's what's going on. And so... I joke about how much I play with shields and stuff like that, which I'm not really an advocate of, but I end up in those positions a lot. Maybe it's because I'm a bad player, actually. But that's one aspect mm. of me just able to sort of hold on. And I also think of myself as a very complimentary player. I'm not as good as Joe Young or Just Luck or Counsel or someone like that. I'm not that kind of level of player, but I'm really good as that supporting player, I think. I can have a really good game with Kiku or Bardo or some and really like dominate a game sometimes, but but I am really good with just a small number of cities. And sometimes I can play up from having a small number of cities. I'm able to like sort of stretch a bit and figure out how to make a few cities work really well. So that's just, that's something about my game for some reason that works. Anyway, so we had a game like that, and, you know, and Joe Young was like, oh, we're going to lose. I was like, nah, man, we got this. You're going to blow up. Your Lux is doing good. You're fine. I'm going to just keep fighting and you're going to just come up with the ship. And eventually we did. We wiped them. We won. And it was like, oh, it was so cool. <laughs> and then yeah, we, so we started juniors the same time and we played together in juniors and uh, had this one really just ridiculous, like 40 turn naval slug fest. The finally Ooh. profit came in and just basically turn call for us. I thought we were stuck because I thought I was going to die. He and I really became like a squad and got to be really good playing in buddies and still are, although we don't really play as, as much together now but it was really that's what really got me into it and that was my experience i got into this was season seven i played the second half of season seven as a junior space cadet and that was, it was me and joe young and it like go dogs came in about that same time on our team and then the next season we really got a whole bunch of the talent that you are familiar with now who are real leaders and stuff now we can talk and do you want me to go through a little bit of that stuff about recruiting or where do you want to go next in our conversation we can go over recruiting yeah. I'm a very personable guy. I'm actually an extrovert. Naturally, I love talking with people. So I would just, whenever I play with someone, I'll just start chatting with them. And if they're good, of course, I'll be sort of like recruiting them immediately. 
But a lot of times also I'm actually trying to help them just find a team they're comfortable with or something like that. It's just so it kind of comes naturally to me. So I actually became one of the most active recruiters as I was kind of finishing up as a junior even. And I didn't necessarily expect to be, be a senior in season eight, which I eventually was. Anyway, you know, we really talked a lot. It was in, ah, and who else? I really, Prophet's a, a good recruiter. Icky's a great recruiter. So really me and Icky and some other guys on the team really started to actively recruit. We really knew we needed to build the team up. And right before the draft system, we picked up a few players who were really, really solid, really good. And then the draft system was instigated. And it was really Prophet's idea. It was, it was just interesting because everyone talked about Prophet as kind of this dirty, sneaky, plays the system guy, which he is. But in the draft, he actually also really wanted to become a fairer playing field because he recognized that only having two or three really good teams was just not fun. Yeah. Right? And because that's what happens, of course, when I came in, it was like, well, do I want to play for a crappy team? Do I want to play for a team that's competitive? I want to play for a team that's competitive. <laughs> then I'm going to learn where I'm going to actually grow and I that's what I found. I mean it was so on Cosmonauts. And that's what drew me there. So that was the thing. So Profit introduced this idea of a draft. And I think this draft system worked out really well. It's actually added a whole lot of fun elements to it with the way that the draft system works in Poly Champions. But we gamed the draft. We weren't really trying to do some kind of sneaky thing or anything, but we just were really good. We had a lot of conversations. We were really active players, all of us, on the main and on PC and other places. And we just when we found someone who we liked, we just would reach out and kind of fill them out and really develop into a whole system of how we did this. And we drew in a lot of people. The real problem became a balance of like, we were drawing them in to draft, but a lot of people would start being like, I want to be a cosmonaut or nothing. It's like, well, we can't do that. that you can't <laughs> tell that. Team. And it was like, people were, you know, so then early on, it was kind of, Ralph was like kind of a wild west sort of thing. And I remember anyway, so there's this one draft. I'm going to get some of the facts wrong. But there were a couple drafts early on, like the second or third draft, where we lined it up and we had people who we knew were really good, but other people hadn't really caught on to yet. And one of those being Edgar Alien Poe, EA Poe, who's just mm. one of our great team leaders now. Oh, my God. I mean, such a great player. I'm going to maybe get this wrong, but but somehow it was like him and the Alpha Omega were in the same draft. Of course, and the is just an incredible player, too. And we got them both. And Ooh. we got a player who's no longer with us but was a strong player, just wasn't as into it. I can't think of their name right now, but we got like all three of them. And it was just crazy. We were like, how did we manage that? Right. <laughs> and then there was another draft. We got Eli. And I can't remember who else it was. I think it's somebody who's still around. I can't remember. We just got these players. It was like, how? It's like, we just were pulling it. We were pulling the talent in. It was great. And that's where the team came from, that we have this really uh, one amazing core of players now. Of course, we have people like Sebastian and Just Luck, who were just these great players who've been around. Of course, Pumpkin, who's been sort of like the heart of the team, has been around the longest. And then, of course, everything blew up. Yeah, we're really set up for this amazing season, I thought. We, we got to the playoffs in Season 8, and that's when stuff really started to come out about what some of the players on our team, including Profit, were doing. Mm -hmm. And it was heartbreaking. You may have some specific questions that might want to kind of guide this better. And I was kind of all in the middle of it, and so it might be better <laughs> if you ask questions because it could get kind of tangential and more confusing if I try to just jump in. So let's yeah, talk certainly. about the cheating scandal. Do you have any idea of how it started, first of all? Well, the way it started is that Profit and Vapo, who were the, kind of the two main people involved in it, as far as like really involved in it, that was how they played. And there was a general consensus, and this is something Profit told me, was that that's what all the top players do. They use turn resetting. There's different things with turn resetting, right? And this is mm -hmm. from before me. So it's not even a real applicable thing anymore. And I'm very glad about that. What Profit convinced me of, and this is, I think really what happened in a sense, is that Profit made it appear to a lot of us that this was standard operating procedure for all the top players. And so all the teams were doing it. If we weren't doing it, we were at a competitive disadvantage. And what I didn't realize is sort of like it's slowly is what happens. It slowly gets more and more. You don't realize that you're going beyond the boundaries you would even set for yourself until you've done it, right? So yeah, you already like, wow, set the mindset. Got out of hand. Yeah, it's already got out of hand. And so, so there's two things going on here. One is the out-and-out -out cheating that was happening, which was Profit and Vapo, they tried to draw some of us into it. And he sort of got me to do it in a season game, which was to reset for vision. 
Now that's the thing that mm. is clearly cheating and is not yeah, okay, definitely. right? Is you, re, you get an explorer, you would you just be able to get an explorer on your city and then go back out of the turn and like clear your data and the turn would start over essentially. But you could take a screenshot and know what vision was and then you could still do a workshop and all the stuff with that afterwards. Or you could, as some players did, and you can see this conversation going on in different places at different times, keep a city not upgraded for turn after turn after turn because what they're doing is taking explore from that city over and over and over again. Oh, and it's like, so that that's was one way to tell level. some people were doing that. Exactly, right? And this is something, I mean, so I was just like, anyway, so in one season game, and this is what I got banned for, but then my ban was lifted because what they realized was that Profit encouraged me to do that. And it was like, I wasn't down with it in a sense, right? And they mm -hmm. could tell that. And it wasn't something I continued to do. But I didn't realize that really was something that apparently Profit and Vapo were doing consistently in every game, right? And so there was this the famous incident, which the great epic video that Pom Thom came out with <laughs> about Bardu. Icky and I had the same problem in a, in a channel. So apparently what happens is that, is that they would have private DM conversations where they were sharing the screenshots of the vision they grabbed and, and really just going at it. And then in the channel, they would sometimes let things slip because they weren't paying attention. And so mm -hmm. Bapo says, oh, I'm on a two-city island. And from the vision you have in the start of his, of his spawn, you how? really would not think he was on a two-city island. Yeah, like how do you know that? Thing. Exactly. And that's what happened. I kind of messed up. I mean, I didn't mess up. I just asked an honest question that a new senior player would ask. Well, how do you know that? I thought he had some way of kind of telling from the terrain or something. A higher level player, right? Mm -hmm. And they just sort of didn't answer. And then Icky Karma saw that comment of his and didn't, as he said, and it's true, he doesn't pay attention to all the game channels all the time. He's not as, as high strategic a player as some of our other teammates are. He and I are kind of the same thing. We're both good team leaders, but we're not like highest top level players. So we mm -hmm. input and we can give good advice, but we're not going to be the ones who give the best advice. Well, he'll check in and he said, oh, well, Two City Island is Bardur. Well, then Bardu, you know, has kicked you. So that's, and that's the thing, is that how did they know that? Well, they knew it because they were cheating. And mm -hmm. how does Vicky not aware that that's happening? That's why the whole team got in trouble was that we should have been able to tell that this was happening. We shouldn't have let it go to where it got as far as the actual real cheating. The other stuff was cheating too, but I'm going to go to why the other stuff that was going on I was more understandable to me. And that's why the bans were lifted for several of us, especially who were juniors when it was really starting to happen. So anyways, Profit and Vapo got lifetime bans and Just Luck has been banned indefinitely and V because there's suspicion of them also doing that in games, although not necessarily in season game. Again, and I think from some of the rankings that you see on Moonrise now, post Moonrise, it's clear that a number of top players did make that a practice. And I, I'm not going to point fingers and like accuse people. It's been a whole thing in community talk and everywhere else. And leaders talk it was a whole thing. But I think Prophet was right that a lot of players did do it. But it wasn't as widespread and uniform as he made it out to be. So it's kind of this confusing gray area, which yeah. is how he was able to convince some of us it was okay. And us not kind of look the other way when he did it. But it is what it is. I'm glad that we're not having that issue anymore. It doesn't seem like. But as far as the turn reset, so then, and you experienced this somewhat, I think. You came in when we had an interpretation of the reset rules that what we called turn drafting. So we were not getting vision from the turns. We were not doing other things you could do with resetting a turn that were we weren't doing ruin resets. That was the other main one. People would, would reset when they got a bad ruin. Like you got an explorer, and you, so you'd reset, and if you move your units around, it would change the ruin mm -hmm. algorithm. And so the next thing would pop up, and so you would do that until you got stars or a giant. And, you, and that's another thing you can tell is that a lot of players get like stars every ruin. And it's like, that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. um, and so we were not doing those things, but what we were doing was we were drafting turns. We would try something out, see how it looked. Could we make that move? Does the road going there make sense? Does the knight get to where it needs to go? What do we think about this? Okay, well, no, let's try something different. And for Icky Carmine, seemed within the rules. It was a stretch, but we thought we were pushing a boundary that was not illegal. It was a competitive advantage that we had decided we would use. Yeah. Um, Can I put in my two cents? Versus... Please do, yeah. 
Yeah, so I'm more of a visual person myself. I like being able to mm-hmm. see things. So, like, yes, this Same is probably thing. never going to be added into the game. But it would be cool if there was a way for you to reset your turn, assuming you didn't get any vision. So you can do, like, run right. out a bunch of roads and ports and whatever not, and go, mm-hmm. oh, schmuck, yeah. can't do that, and then just undo. Right. But Exactly, and, that, and that's what we were doing. Mm-hmm. Um, we knew that not everybody did it, and some people f- would frown on it, but we thought it was within the rules, as they were written at the time. And I think there's still an argument that can be made for that. But I was surprised by, when it all came out, how shocked people were by the fact we were advocating that and telling our juniors to do it and telling other players to do it and use it mm-hmm. in every single game. So that convinced me that we'd gone in a bad direction, that we had gone into cheating by doing that because the sentiment of the league, the sentiment of other players in general, we had crossed the line, even if it was in the scope of the rules, possibly, arguably. Yeah. Um, and so that's what I regret. All right, so I regret doing it. Um, and I regret that I encouraged it. And I regret that I advocated for it. But that's how we got to that point, is we thought we were, we were finding sort of a, an edge that we could use. And it was. It was very helpful, obviously. Of course, then there's the whole drama about how that happened, which is, I don't know if other interviews or other places you've talked about this, but there was another player who got either into our server or somebody else shared channels with him and so that's where these channels came from that everybody was able to see them. He shared mm-hmm. them with other teams. He shared them with mods. So again, I'm not really mad about someone being a whistleblower. That's actually, I think, good in any institution or organization. Yeah. Someone actually calling out bad behavior. So I'm not really mad about that happening. But it was a lot of drama. And it was them behaving badly. And it's the whole thing. I was not as involved in that because I wasn't a mod or team leader. I'm not a mod. Anyway, so obviously... I felt defensive because I knew not everybody on the team was cheating the way Vapo and Profit were. But mm-hmm. I yeah, definitely the anger about the resetting and stuff. And there was a lot of people who were saying there were people who I was convinced, and I don't know if that's fairly convinced or if it was Profit's influence, that these people were also would do the same things they were doing. And so there was a lot of us, I think, and just like we'll talk about this too, maybe if you talk to him, he and I had a lot of conversations that, man, maybe we really were believing that other teams were doing the same stuff we were. And that's where a lot of the defensiveness and the anger came from on our part. And it took us almost like some undoing. And he and I talked about this, like, oh, I guess we need to realize that those guys doing that stuff, they were going too far. Like, we knew they were going too far as far as the vision grabbing and, and stuff that they were doing that we found out about. But as far as even, like, the turn resetting and things like that, we were convinced that it was common and it was not. That it sort of was a mental shift that had to happen for us to realize we really were outside of the norms, and in the wrong. So hopefully that's why I think Just Luck will be back eventually, and I hope they will be back eventually too, but we'll see. But that's the long of the fallout of it, and I think ultimately, and I guess you're going to ask me something about this, it's going a long time, I apologize, how the shift of Vikings happened, the name change. I think. It's not just a marketing thing, but moving away from that legacy mm-hmm. that was really a lot connected to profit. Because, and interestingly, we've had a couple of older team leaders, former team leaders, Rex and Lemmy, have come back into the team and are playing with us now on juniors, who were there sort of and kind of went out at the time Profit was coming in. And so I had mixed feelings for them about changing the name from Cosmonauts, but, but I also like Vikings. It'd be cool that we came yeah. up with that. So, so that's where some of that came from. Yeah. And I actually, yeah, but for me, there was actually also the piece... I had some teams ask if I wanted to leave because my ban was if I didn't play for the Cosmonauts, I could come back in and play. Oh. But I decided to stick around because, again, I was a junior. I was a new pro. They, I was under, I was being influenced, all that stuff. I didn't really get it. And so they were, they were being, thankfully, understandably, I think, lenient. And Icky saved my butt, I think, by helping them understand that. But I decided, I was like, no, I want to stick around. I want to be here for us to come back out of this. And I knew that Icky was going to make this a clean, strong team. Because we were to be a strong team however we played. And if we did it the right way, we could still be a strong team. And are proving that, I think. Definitely. Um, yeah. And so I want to be here for that. And I want to be there for him. So, and, you know, just all the relationships that we form as a team. Because our team is great in that we have so much social interaction and support of one another. And have all these conversations that are not polytopia related even. 
but there's so much learning and growth and just camaraderie and fun that happens. So it's just a really cool community. So I really want to be a part of it and see us win a championship together. I stuck yeah, it out. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was yeah. on the fence for leaving the team quite a while, and I messaged you like probably two or three different times about asking to leave oh, yeah. the team. Right. <laughs> yep. Yet yep. I yep. managed to stick around because I'm like, glad you did. Yeah. Because from my perspective, it's like, you are a cheater. You're part of the cosmos. Uh, mm-hmm. I came into the team. I was fresh. They told me it was okay. What the heck? Right. Exactly. And that was the thing. It's like, and for me, it was, it was similar to what I was, I was being told by mm-hmm. this top-level player who taught me everything, um, a lot of what I know about the game. And I just took what he said. You know, oh, sure. Yeah, I did it to you. <laughs> what was done to me, in a sense. But it's we're in the past now. For that, right? mm-hmm. But it's in the past now, and I'm really glad for the fixes on Moonrise that have allowed that not to be a thing we can do with the game. And I, yeah, I apparently it is, but it's a lot harder. So, oh, I, uh, hopefully well, they'll fix that. Better. Yeah, hopefully. I have not heard these rumors about mm. it still being possible. I heard it somewhere, um, but haven't anyway, caught yeah. up to it. Yeah, well. We'll hear about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess. So what else did you want to discuss, if anything? I know. I've so does that mean you're going to update your nickname in main to Loki Vikings? Because it's still Cosmonauts. Does it still say Cosmonauts? I'll have to fix that. Yeah. AKA Loki Cosmonauts. <laughs> <laughs> I have I'm guessing that's main. how much you spend on main. That's right. I'm not on main much at all. For a while, I was trying to build my ELO up just so I would feel better about myself as a player. And for a while, I was playing a whole bunch of 1v2s and then 1v3s. And nice. A month. And I was kicking butt with them, too. It was fun with getting Lux and playing a bunch of less quality players. <laughs> and really boosted it up. But then it was like, what am I doing? It's a number. So I decided just to focus back on Polychamps and playing the games I really enjoyed playing, which were the team games. That's the, mm-hmm. that's the fun thing. For, for sure. Or playing with people I know. Yeah, that's certainly. Fun. Yeah, that's where I'm at. I actually joined Poly Ladder recently, and so we'll see about that. That sounds fun, sort of that kind of way of rating and testing. Yeah, but I'm really, the whole team name tournament we did, I thought that was a fun thing that Poe organized, where we had like 80 names that we winnowed them down. Yeah, there was Um, a lot at the start. (laughs) There were so many, and there were some that I put in a whole bunch, and I really liked a lot of them. I sort of had this one evening of like just throwing out names, and I was like, and some of them made it kind of far, like Redwoods was one that I put in just as I was throwing huh. out ideas, and it got into like top eight. I was like, I was kind of digging it. I thought it was a cool name. I don't remember um, that one. Yeah. Because I was like, it was kind of torn almost. But it was funny because Vicky had said to me, and Vins and he had talked about it, I think, Benzors, another of our teammates, they discussed Vikings, which is funny, I think, because then Benzors is the one we put in Dreadnoughts, I think, the original battleships, and he was really pushing that, which would have been kind of a cool name too, and unique, kind of like mm-hmm. Cosmonauts. But I think Vikings had more stuff to it, which we've discovered. I think that was true. But he and Nikki talked about Vikings from the very beginning. That was even like the first thing. But then we moved to this. No, we should do a tournament and have other people put in names. And uh, <laughs> I think, you know, and Vikings came out on top still. It was not <laughs> not in an engineered way or anything, but it has that appeal, kind of going into battle in the boat mm-hmm. together, which is also our, our theme and when it was Cosmonauts. So there's that sort of con- continuity, but also just the whole, like, we're able to use this whole where we have a lot of our channels now in the server, Old Norse words, which is kind of goofy, but funny. Yeah, yeah I don't so. try to pronounce those. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was an English major, and I loved uh, Old English poetry, so I actually studied my own Old English a little bit. Hmm. And I remember a grammar for my professor was like in my dorm room in college looking at Old English grammar and stuff. And I still wouldn't try to pronounce a lot of those words. I'm a real nerd about a lot of things, but I, there was no thing that drew me to it. But anyway, I think it's a cool new name that we have for our team uh, mm-hmm. since. So, so far it's been good. I especially like Valkyries. I think, I know you actually in the questions noted that I voted for Kraken and I really don't know why. I really was torn about Valkyries and Kraken, which was the other junior team name, like in the finals of team name tournament for juniors. I think it might've been just that Valkyries being below Vikings didn't make sense to me and, Kraken was sort of cool connotations and stuff. At first, I was like a little annoyed about the whole Kraken thing. Thinking it was like, oh, it's like, you know, it's a thing from 
people say all the time and stuff. Yeah, I do you. have genuine concern somehow, with that. Yeah, and so I, I but I somehow Kraken kind of appealed to me. But I think what I did was I just voted for it because it was not going to win, if I remember. Like, I was trying to just sort mm. of give it a little bit more boost because it was like, wait, I think it was like, only like I had a couple of votes at the t- point where I voted for it. And then it went up more and was like, oh, God. But yeah, and then it, for a while it was like tied up like, oh, so, great. Yeah. <laughs> right. I so told I myself even... that if the Kraken <laughs> got the first place, I was going to leave. Really? I, I, I told myself that. that. Would... Wow, yeah. That's how strongly I was against it. <laughs> well, I think being Vikings of Valkyries, I mean, having a specifically feminine name, I think also the idea mm. that the Vikings being more general, it's a name that's applied to the culture, even though it's not accurate, but that's what you know, historians even use, yeah. Viking culture. And Valkyries being that specific mythological figure, you know, being within that in a sense. It's cool. And the logo that Newt came up with for us for Valkyries is just really cool looking. That's it. I think it's a cool junior team name. Care to explain why your highest role is called Queen Bee? And why you requested Empress? I don't know. Is Space Empress still a thing? I don't know. All I know is when I looked at the logs, somebody suggested Empress. You asked for the Empress role and you have Queen Bee. (laughs) That's all I know. (laughs) I don't even know. (laughs) <laughs> I'm not sure where that all came from or what. I wasn't aware that I had the queen bee role, but I think that fits me. I'm definitely the person who sort of gets the conversation going and sort of, I feel like I'm the sort of mm. glue guy on the team. I sort of, I guess it's kind of my nature, checking on people, and keep conversation lively, but, you know, sort of make sure people are all in- involved. Queen bee, I guess, is kind of the bossy person, so that's not really me, but, so, that's mm-hmm. somewhat appropriate. I'm sure it's a gag thing that Icky was doing, and, and somehow I wound up with it as uh, being the second in command, essential. It's really been more, very rewarding being a team leader, especially being junior team leader along with Eli, that we're working with the juniors, working with y'all. The last season, I really was way too into it, and I tried to help in every channel, and I think it was actually counterproductive. Mm. So I'm really glad we're sharing that more. And Eli's doing a lot more of the work, actually, this season. I've got lots of going on in my personal life that I'm, you know, to keep me from doing quite as active on the team, which is, which is good because there needs to be that balance and that shouldn't ever take over your life, but it's a fun outlet and it's a great community. I mean, like it's, as I'm going through stuff in life, I'm chatting with people on the team and sharing that stuff on the team and the support we give each other is really cool. We're mm-hmm. going through stuff. I think it's actually a community. Like It's a team and that's a very neat thing. Ready to move on to some general questions? Absolutely. So, what's your favorite drive, and why? Oh, that's so hard. I, <laughs> I from the get go, I like Bardor again. So, I have like Northern European kind of ancestry, and I'm a big guy with a beard, and so there's always that sort of natural draw towards Viking kind of thing, and so I thought that was cool. I like the way that the style of play with Barter, which is that you can chop aggressively or play with the math, of course. That was so early on, of course, for when you're first playing, it's it's a trap to play. Obviously, I've played with Luxador a lot. Like I mentioned doing the 1v2s, 1v3s with them. I love, I think Aqua is so fun to play with a Baryon. Just, it's so hit or miss. But when you hit out and get the Tridention spamming, oh my gosh, it's just fun to do that hit and run attack and just it's such a very different way to play yeah um, but i guess as far as like the main tribes i really love kiku because there's that wonderful blend of having to figure out a really unique kind of strategy you're focused on custom houses and that kind of econ and sailing early on but you can also sometimes play them much more conventionally with like playing a, a land-based attack with EP 2 there's just different ways to, and it's tricky it's a tricky tribe and it can be absolutely dominant Whereas mm-hmm. it's a little more straightforward with Bardor and Luxor. You know what you're trying to do. You have to sort of, you got to hit out the right sort of way with Kiku. So there's a little bit more of a challenge to it. It's probably the one I enjoy playing the most right now, as far as the main tribes go. Hmm. But I think Aquarion is just, is really fun. And I like Illyrion a lot too. I've always played with them. For a while, I played with them in season a lot. Season seven, season eight. Especially I played Illyrion as the third player on 3v3. Again, the kind of odd, different strategy but different ways to go with it. 
Okay. Do you have a least favorite something. tribe? Polaris. I cannot figure them out. What? I cannot figure out Polaris. I suck at Polaris. You need to and talk to Snowstorm. He loves Polaris. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> People try to talk me through it and help me with it, but I just cannot get it right. I mean, I see the appeal of them, and they're, they're pretty amazing, but it's just like, and it, it's the same things I like about those other tribes, but I don't know. I can't get it. <laughs> yeah, they're a bit different, so. Very different. Yeah, they are. They are. Okay. Do you have a favorite unit? No. I still have that tendency towards going riders as early as possible and spamming riders. Mm. So that a strategy I use, I use riders a lot. That's again being a product of having been taught a lot by Prophet, his very high aggro style. I'm moving away from that somewhat. So if you ask Poe, he'd say, "Oh, Loki's favorite unit is shields, 100 <laughs> percent." And I don't. I really don't. But um, you know, I do know how to use them. I use them more than other players. Prophet would ring me for it when he was coaching me about stuff. I'd go with shields. He goes, "Don't go shields. Why are you doing that? You've already lost the game." Stretch it out. Stretch it out. You can't lose if you you haven't died. You haven't lost. <laughs> but actually, so archers is that basic combo of warriors, riders, archers is just the most effective thing. Don't need other units a lot of times. I think it's changing some with the way the maps are now. Obviously, there's more use for knights. On you know, Dryland, you have to go knights. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, I've, I've played Hoodrick a lot more. I should have put Hoodrick in one of my favorite tribes. I've really gotten to like them, and I, a lot of times I end up using catapults with them to great effect. And so mm-hmm. I've actually kind of moved away from the idea of using catapults. I've actually found them to be much more useful, because you, you just have to be really careful, of course, when you use them, but they can be really good. A mixture. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> and I would say, everybody, it always depends on the context. You, there's never one way to play. You have to always judge the situation. That's one thing I like is it always shifts. Slight mm-hmm. things will shift it. And what you need to do to make the right play. Obviously, often multiple answer. But it's, you can't ever say that there's a rule. You always do this. You always do that. No. you got to figure out what's going on. Yeah, especially if the opposing team does something weird or an unconventional strategy. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And as another thing, I'm glad to be known for it is that I use unconventional strategies a lot of times. Sometimes it's just because I'm dumb and try <laughs> dumb shit. <laughs> but I also do tend to be kind of a creative thinker, you know, thinking outside the box. How can we get a little bit of a edge here or something? So were you not the, the, secretly the first one that thought of the Grow Forest of Lock Knight movement strategy? No, that was not me. <laughs> I think that as um, Pra. Pra's the person who's like the master about thinking of things like that. He has the whole pro defense videos you can go and find. He's able to hold off and force a draw with Illyrion where he just gets in a corner and grows forests and has catapults and dragons mm. you can't penetrate. It's pretty crazy. Like he'll decide he's going to set it up and he knows he can't win. He'll never lose. So he eventually gets a draw, which is like the only way you can ever actually do that. But wow. yeah, no, I did not come up with that. Thinking of unconventional directions as far as like saying let's go with a knight really early or I'm going to hit the water here even though it doesn't seem like a water map because that's where the advantage is because they're not going to be going there. Um, Hmm. How do you shift the battle to a place where they're not ready for it and where you might be able to have an edge? Mm -hmm. Using shields. I mean putting shields up in the right places they start trying to take a city, it's going to cost them. The trade is going to be very good for you, star-wise. And you can build up in other areas. Different things like that. I guess I'm not as innovative, but I'll think of different ways to go about playing a certain situation that other people wouldn't necessarily come up with first. And sometimes it's a terrible idea, but that's one thing about being on a team is I check it, and then just luck or Joe or someone will be like, no, that's stupid. <laughs> Every now and then, and they'll be like, that's brilliant. Yeah, we got to totally do that. Okay, cool. That's fun. Mm-hmm. Um, hit or miss. Hit or miss. That's right. So what is your favorite part of the Polytopia fandom as a whole? I don't know. I'm not as, I guess, into it as much. I dig what they're doing with the tribe moons and stuff. I'm always impressed by how much different art and creativity comes out from all the different people who are into the game. 
I think it's cool that it has that level of fandom. It's not something I'm as into. It hasn't drawn me in yet. Although if there was like PolytopiaCon, I'd probably go to it and my wife would <laughs> divorce me. But... <laughs> yes, I dig the artwork. I mean, sometimes it's really creative what people come up with that I get to see. So that's, I guess because it's what I see because it gets promoted by Mijuan and stuff. That's what I see. I don't have a lot of sense about what all is out there in the fandom. Yeah, you spend most of the time on the team server. That's right. I'm a PC player. I can play team games, venture off into single player solo stuff every now and then, but I'm there for the game. That's right. I'm into the game strategy. That's what I'm there for, is the game. But then, of course, the fun of the people on our team keeps me there, too. Yeah. Yeah. How many games are you usually in at once? So I've got a several number of random games that aren't really going on. Like this one game that I think I started right when random games when Moonrise came out that I joined and it was like max number of players, massive map, but but it was a week long turn. People are oh, still picking boy. tribes. Oh what? <laughs> I think it was I would have left that a month ago. No, I'm interested to see what happens. I wonder I mean, I'm wondering. <laughs> I'm curious about it. So it was just there in my feed. Right now, probably about 15 games. My high, and this is when, you know, I think my wife was really pissed off at me playing so much. I had like 70 plus games. Joe had more, and Joe keeps a whole bunch of games. To play How so do much, people but, do that? Well, I didn't play great. Some people can play a bunch of games and play really good. They just don't make mistakes. They just know what they're doing. I just was obsessively playing, which I do. Addictive gamer. Mm. But I, I did. I, I learned a lot from playing all those games, though. I learned a lot. I made a lot of mistakes. I won a lot of games, too. I, thankfully, I do think I win more than I lose. I just learned a bunch of just doing it. And so I, I was just really into it. I was learning. It was the first day of playing the game. I got into it with its actual people. It was really fun. I cut down more for the season. So I'm really seriously playing just the season games and a couple of fun games with other Vikings, actually, with Old Love. Cool. Yeah. I'm playing a couple of games just for fun of it. And then I've got one, a couple free for alls, on PC, and I got my butt kicked by this Nova, who I guess we might not try to recruit. Who's a Russian, Rylands, being Russians. Yeah, <laughs> those are Russian. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I played Illyrian on, on Dryland, which is usually pretty strong, and he showed up with knights and just destroyed me. I was like, man, huh. you really got to him quick. I was I hadn't got there yet. You know, usually I can respond to that against most players, but he just, he really had it down. He was committed and he didn't make any mistakes with his knights. He really played it smart. I was pretty impressed that he went early, but he had enough econ to sustain it too. That sucked. But. and then, Can't always win. Anyway, but that, you can't always win. I think there's some people who almost always do, but I'm not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not either by a long shot. <laughs> It's still fun. It's pretty cool to be on a team with some of those guys who are like almost unbeatable. Like to see some of the stuff that Joe Young and Just Luck do. I beat the in a game where he was playing friendly. He like was coaching me for a while, trying to help me get better. Then I actually beat. Him. And I was like, I felt like such a badass. But the thing is, I didn't screw it up. He was helping me and coaching me and saying, "Look, this is how you take advantage of a better position." Again, I got so drawn into the super aggro style of play. My econ really suffered. So I'm really trying to have to work back up to this, being able to use my economy well and focus on that enough. That is that balanced play so that I don't get to late game and I'm at a super disadvantage, which was often what was happening, especially in 1v1. Yeah. And that's what Just Luck and D have helped me with a lot the last few weeks. It's helped me a lot. And so if it's going to be a season, I can be a better player for it. Yeah, but that was a highlight, even though it was just a friendly game. I was like, I legitimately beat you. I actually beat you. He goes, yeah, you beat me. You played great. You made the right place. Good job. <laughs> but it was an unranked game. Oh. It was a, yeah, it wasn't a ranked game. I'm a good enough player that really, unless people are trying to get ELO, I'm still dangerous enough that I could find Squirrel, finds a nut. Even Loki he is a dangerous enough player that even the best players will they'll play me. They probably will beat me. But my ELO isn't high enough to be worth it, I guess. Kind of stink to lose to me. Although now they're all reset, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, anyway, mine's well, I... still sitting at like 1,037. <laughs> <laughs> I keep yeah. losing games, but whatever. No, that's how you learn. Get beat, talk to them afterwards, go back over it. If someone's better than you, ask them questions. So that's what I did. So I still do. 
any other questions you had? I know it's almost no, that's all I had. The longest interview you've had, yeah. No, nah, second longest. Oh, good. I'm not the most talkingest. <laughs> well, all right. Well, TNT man, it's cool talking to you, and this yeah. is a fun project you got going. Looking forward to the rest of the season, man, and maybe winning a couple trophies together. Maybe. Go Vikings! As always, thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share it. For the text version, you can join my Discord in the description. I also have a YouTube channel where I play 1v1s and occasionally do tutorials. We'll be back next week. Bye!